Hello and welcome to Whitehorse Music TV! My name is Richard Badina and my hands are not frozen in place like that. Um, and I am co-owner of this wonderful shop with my lovely wife Michelle Badina, who's behind the camera. If you turn around you might see her. Probably not. Um, today I am going to show you how to replace strings on your cello. Now, yeah, a lot of people at this particular moment are in lockdown because of that coronavirus thing and, you know, you can't get to your teacher to help, for them to help you restring your cello and you can't get to a shop or anything like that. So, last resort, cello string broken, chances are you might not be able to play for a long time if you don't fix it yourself. You have to fix it yourself. Watch this video, I'll give you an idea of how to do it. Let's give it a try. All right, so... Um, for instance, let's just say on this cello, this A string has broken. Join, it's gone, it's over there. Now you're missing a string. So I've got a whole set of uh, versum strings here that I'm going to put on this cello. Um, I'll find the A string to start with. Okay, the A is in here. Da -da -da. Pull it out. You'll see it has a ball down the end here. And this wrapping around here is called silking. And then at the other end, it's got more silking here. And that's to help it get friction as you wind it across the pegs. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to uh, find the hole where the string goes on the peg. So um, actually, oh, first thing, while you've got your string off, there's a few things you can do. You can start by wiping down the fingerboard because this fingerboard will not have been naked for a long time and it gives you a good chance to clean it, get some of the muck out. Look how mucky that is. All right, and this is a relatively new cello. You can get real build up under there and getting rid of it can improve the sound. So that's a good thing. That's number one. Number two is sometimes the pegs might be too stiff really hard to turn. Other times you might find you have slippery pegs that slip too much. You've got two different compounds to help with that. You've got one called peg paste. This one that looks like a little lipstick. Don't use it as lipstick because it's um, the wrong colour for you. Um, and the other one is called peg drops and it's a liquid. Now the, the peg paste is for helping the, the pegs to turn more smoothly. You don't want to use this if you have pegs that are slipping because it'll make them a little bit more slippy. You don't want that. So um, on this particular cello, I felt like the pegs were a little bit slippy. And so I'm going to use this peg drops. I don't know if you can see that peg drop compound. Um, and to use this, what I do is I pull out the peg and there's two spots where the peg touches the um, peg box, and I put one little drop onto each, and then I'll plonk it into the peg hole and do a few turns, and that, and then your dog might be able to help as well. <laughs> Are you helping there, buddy? Good. Um, so you turn it a few times, and you can feel now it's it's gripping a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so we've done that. We've cleaned that and we've um, put some peg compound on this to stop it from slipping as much. There's another thing that you can do, and this is possibly even more important. Um, down here, you got your fine tuners. Often the reason your peg might, the string might break is because this fine tuner is not right down to the bottom. You haven't been able to um, tighten the string anymore and so you've needed to go to use the peg and you've um, over tightened it or something like that and kapowie, the string breaks. So it's important now to anti-clockwise, bring out this fine tuner so it's out a long way and you've got lots of, lots of play room there. All right, so that, that one's fire. We've done those three things. Now we can start actually putting the string on. All right, hang on. Hang on, hang on, stop the press. Um, I just noticed that my twin brother had um, missed out on a couple of things. Gotta say, 
He's a very handsome man. Very lovely full head of hair. Mm, very impressive. Very knowledgeable as well. Anyway, um, yeah, I just noticed that he'd left out a couple of things. Um, one thing that's a really good thing to do when your string is off is uh, put a little bit of pencil lead. This is a 2B pencil. I don't mind whether it's 2B or not 2B. Um, but put a fairly generous amount of graphite on there so that the string, as you're tuning it, will move across there and the little ringlets of the string will not grip, will not grab against the, the bridge and start pulling it. Also, down the other end, when the string is off, use a bit of pencil lead. Oh, I got a bit messy, but that's fine. It's fine. Too much is better than too little. And that will stop the, the string from grabbing on there. You see a lot of strings that start unwinding and breaking at the nut, and that'll help prevent that. So that's an important thing. And the other thing that my extremely handsome, intelligent um, twin brother uh, missed out on mentioning is that it's important before you start to have a look at your bridge and make sure your bridge is standing fairly much upright. I tend to carve my bridges so that they very, very slightly lean back so that as you're tuning with the pegs, it's got more resistance to being pulled over like that and go Pew. You don't want it to go Pew. So if you find that your bridge is leaning over like this, then you really do not want to be putting a new string on and tuning it up because it'll continue to pull and I'm just likely fall over. Um, so at that, if you notice it's like this, you can either say, uh, I'm just gonna have to wait for my teacher or you can bite the bullet. Now do not blame me if this goes wrong and try straightening up this bridge. To do that, usually I will take a little pressure off the strings and then this is my, my technique for it. I'll have one, one hand holding the bridge down here. This hand isn't really moving, it's just holding the bridge. So um, making it more steady. And this hand, just moving the top of the bridge, straightens it up, pulls it up. There you go. And you know that it's um, at the right angle when the feet, if they've been fitted properly, are now snug against the, the body of the cello. So that's nice. It's leaning very, very slightly backward, and that's exactly how I've carved it. Um, and that will prevent the bridge from... So it's good to check that bridge, make sure it's upright between each tuning of each string. Okay, now you can go back to my extremely handsome twin brother. All right. So I'm going to, first of all, um, locate the hole... And in this case, the hole has migrated over here, so it's actually on that side of the D string. And we want the A string to be on the furthest right side. So I'm going to pull the peg out slightly and put the string into the hole. Then, this is my little trick, I start winding the string. But you'll see there's two sides of the string that you can wind. You can either wind on this, <laughs> thanks buddy, thanks, he's helping. You can either wind on this side or on this side. In the end, you want it to be on this side closest to the peg, but I'm gonna start it winding on the side furthest away from the peg, do a wind in a bit, and then bring the string back over onto this side. And that way it sort of locks in the string. Okay, do a few winds until the sil silking here reaches the nut and you've got the peg nicely in there so it's not going to suddenly si slip. Still keep pressure on that string. So I'm keeping pressure on it so it doesn't suddenly unravel and loosen what I've done. And then the other end, you get the ball and you plonk it into its little wedge down here. There you go. So it's nice and secure. And then you line it up at both the bridge and down the other end of the nut. Okay, so that's that's lined up there. And then you start. Tiny. 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 
tightening, tightening, tightening. Now, on this side, it's important that the string is not completely wedged up against the edge of the peg box. That can cause a, a string break. You don't want that. And it's also important, I mean, it's not going to happen on this particular cello, but the, the string is not right up against the peg box here. All right, so we're winding on. And I'm still, have, have a look at the string down here. You'll see my thumb there. It's helping to keep tension at both ends. So it's keeping the tension the whole time. And then I'm, I'll continue to turn the peg. And now the fun bit. Okay, I've started tuning it up. We've got to the stage where I can start tuning it up. Now you need a human, hopefully the human who's holding the camera, to walk over to the piano and play the correct A on the piano. Okay, I need to get that note, that string, up to that particular pitch. The way I do that is um, as I'm turning the peg, I'm continually plucking the string with my thumb. So I'm turning the peg with my right hand and, and plucking the string. So all of the time I'm hearing the sound of that string and so I, I can hear how it relates to the sound on the piano just then. It's also important as you're turning the peg that you're pushing the peg in as you're turning. You do not want to um, turn the peg right you know, keep it fairly loose, and then at the end, try pushing it in. It'll just slide back. It doesn't work that way. You need to push in as you're turning. And because I've been doing it for many, many years, I can hear where I've just about reached the A note. Um, if the person holding the camera could now walk over and play an A again, I'll see if I can match it exactly to that A note on the piano. Okay. So I'll turn as I'm pushing in and as I'm plucking and I found the note. Great. And now I've got a string which is in tune. I've got a clean fingerboard. Um, the peg is less likely to slip because it's got some of those peg drops on it and because I was pushing in as I was turning. The fine tuner is a long way out here and so as the string continues over the next few months to go flatter, uh, because it stretches, the string stretches over time, as it continues to go flatter, I'll have lots of this fine tuner room to move to bring it up to pitch before I need to use the pegs again. You want to avoid using the pegs. So this is all really set and great. Now what I'll do is I'll do a really quick one on the D string, just so you can see what it looks like in fast, super speed. Okay, the Versum D string, purchased at Whitehorse Music. Oh my gosh, did you notice this um, this this cloth? cloth has the Fiddlesticks brand on it? That's also from Whitehorse Music. Now, cleaning the fingerboard, great. Oh yeah, mucky. Um, bringing out the fine tuner. Beautiful. Okay, that's a long way out. Excellent. Now, pulling the peg out. Yeah, I've got the peg. I'll put on a peg drop onto each of these. There we go. Oop. Drop it onto the cello. No, don't drop it onto the cello. Now, important as well, if you're struggling to look in here, um, it's probably better not to lift up the scroll like this. I had a work experience student a long time ago, slip and drop cello and break neck. We don't want that happening. So um, we'll leave the neck down there. Uh, oh, great. The peg drops are helping it grip a lot. It sort of grips a bit to start with. And then as they dry, they grip a little bit more. It's really, I love them. I love the peg drops. Then you find the, the hole for the string, put it through the hole and I start winding on the side furthest away from the peg head. All right, I'm gonna plonk the D string in. So you find the little hole, plonk the, the string through the hole like that, and then start winding while pulling on the string a little bit, a little bit of tension, winding on the side furthest away 
from the peg head and then bring it over to the side of the peg head. And you've got this little um, bit of string that's going over the other string and holding it in place. And I keep winding it until the, um, the silking here is just over the nut. Okay, and then I'll grab the other end. And another thing my wifey just mentioned is that this um, little uh, ball at the end, you want to make sure it's not sideways like that because often that prevents it from tuning properly. You want to have it um, lined up and then hook it in. Okay, keeping pressure on, making sure it's in the groove of the, of the um, bridge. And then I start my winding. Making sure it's not right up against the peg box. And lining up with the nut. And now I've got it all lined up, so that is great. Okay, so I've put the D string on and now I'm going to show you how to tune it. So my special way of doing it, I showed on the A string, is to hold the cello neck with my left hand here and pluck the D string with my thumb as I'm turning the peg. So you have to locate the right peg. The D string happens to, D string peg happens to be upright near the scroll. So I'll be plucking as I'm turning and pushing the peg in. Really important because you don't want to just bring the peg up to the right, the string up to the right pitch and then try pushing it in at the end because it'll just slip back. You don't want that. So I'll turn the peg and push in as I'm going and I'll get my famous wife to play the D on the piano for me. There we go, that's a D. So I'm gonna push in as I'm turning. There we go, we got up to the D. The fine tuner is all the way out. And so now we've got an A that's relatively in tune and a D that's relatively in tune. And so now I'll quickly do the, the G and the C strings. All right, so I'll take off. Oh, that sounded good. Not sure what that sounds like. Sounds like a, a tortured donkey or something. So wipe down the fingerboard. Oh, get some muck off it. This is great. Put a couple of drops of the peg paste. Pe not peg paste, that's the peg drops. Peg drops for making it s them stick a little bit better. Got your, your G-string. Make sure the fine tuner is out as far as it'll go. As far as it needs to go. And then put the string through the hole and start winding on the side away from the peg and then bring it back to the side on the side of the peg until you've reached your, your silking has come down to about where the nut is there. Keeping some tension on it. Make sure the ball goes into the little slot properly. Line everything up, turn it, and the G string. And that's brought it up to a G. Because I've done it a lot, I don't need to hear the piano. I'll bring <coughs> the C out. <laughs> I love that sound. All right. Walk that string over there. I'm very excited to hear this cello with these versum strings on it. All right, this happens to be a Struner Master 7 8 size cello. So it's sort of between 3 quarter size and uh, full size. It's a very comfy size for a lot of humans. It's a less common size. Um, I probably sell 1 7 8 to every 50 full size cellos, I would say. All right, plonk it in. Ah, oh, that peg paste is working of oh, peg paste. That those peg drops are working wonders. Okay, I'll plonk the C string in the hole where it belongs. Start turning on the side away from the peg head. Bring it back to the side of the peg head, and the silking has reached the the nut there. Putting the little that in so it's facing the correct way lining up with the bridge and start turning making sure it's not jammed up against the, the peg box and bring it up to pitch 
Oh, one thing I forgot this time was to bring out the little fine tuner. Silly me, I'll bring it out now. Now, because I was silly like that, the string's way out of tune again, so I have to do another another try at the peg, which, you know, is for people who are inexperienced in this, is a, another chance of breaking the string, so that's not a good thing. I'll bring it up to pitch now. And now, another thing is, once you've finished your tuning, each time you're putting a new string on, a, on, on the cello, the other strings will start going a little bit out of tune. And so I usually will go back the other way and do another little bit of a tuning. You can, if you're inexperienced with using the pegs, just now go to using the pegs to bring it up into tune across the cello. I might do a bit of a, a cello string tuning video to help you with that. So stay tuned to White Horse Music TV. Okay, so that's all fairly nicely in tune. Let's give it a little bit of a try. Shall I sit up in the chair? Why not? I'm excited to hear this. It really had a bit of a weird set on it before. All right, let's see. I'll give it a, a little bit of a tune with the fine tuners. <laughs> Sounds great! Nice job. Thanks for watching and um, I hope you have some success with tuning your cello and restringing it.